Hello there, Suri Chitta here, and welcome to Awakening Heart. I want to set the scene. Because we're going to go on a journey. And I'm going to guide you every step of the way. You may have been involved in spiritual practice or meditation for many decades, a few years, or you may be a complete beginner. It doesn't matter. The metaphor I'm going to share with you is relevant for everybody. And it's something that we're going to explore over the next weeks, months and years. In fact, if you keep up with your practice, it will be something that we unpack and investigate and explore for the rest of our lives. I've been exploring this now for nearly 30 years. And I'm still exploring. So, imagine there's a large block of ice. And in this block of ice is a beautiful, glittering, shining jewel. This jewel represents a jewel of a joyful life. It represents a life of ease. It represents, in a slightly different way of putting, our true nature. It represents our deeper nature, our nature which is joy which is happiness which is contentment whatever term that you like to use that's that's what it is a life of ease let's say that's what the jewel represents now this jewel is in a block of ice we don't quite have access to it. We know it's there because we can see it. We can see it. We can intuit it's there. We sense it's there. We know that a life of joy, um, we know we have a deeper nature, a true nature, which is not sullied by conditioning. And it's something that sometimes we vaguely sense, other times we, yes, it's there, but how do I access this um, jewel, this something precious, something beautiful, something, a, a life of ease, a life of connection with other people, because that's what the jewel represents. It's multifaceted. Any jewel has many, many facets, and so has this jewel. And it's there inside each and every one of us. And our work, my job, is to help you reveal, to connect with this jewel. So how do we do it? Well, it's in this block of ice. We don't have instant access to it. So how do you get to this jewel? What do we do? What do you do with ice? You melt it. You put the ice in the sun and the sun melts the ice very gradually. We don't go there with a sledgehammer because that's violence, that's aggression. It doesn't work. And the ice is still ice. It's just in pieces. Okay. We have to use a way that is kind, is, is that, that is, is gentle, and but, but is effective. And the reason we use the image of the sun melting the ice is that the ice is, um, well, lifeless. Life is suspended. There's no movement in ice. It's still and cold and hard. Now, if you put that ice in the sun, the sun begins to soften it, to melt it. So there's a transformation from ice, and as the ice begins to melt, it becomes water. There's a transformation happens. And the longer it stays in the sun, the more melting, there is more softening, the more 
um, the mushier it gets. <laughs> yeah. So the sun is similar to awareness or mindfulness, whatever you want to call it, meditation, self-observation. I don't want us to use just one term. We're going to use a few different terms for what we're going to be engaging over the next months and years. So as the sun shines down on, on the ice and begins to melt it, so mindfulness or awareness, as we bring more of that into our life, it melts the ice that surrounds the jewel. And the ice is made up of our rigid held beliefs, our unwillingness to experience our emotions or certain emotions. For some it might be anger, for others it might be enthusiasm, for others it might be around sexuality, for others it might be creativity. But we all have certain emotions that we don't want to experience and they become locked in the body. We freeze them out of awareness. So they become the ice. We have rigid held beliefs on how life should be, how another person should be, how we should be, how our wife should be, our husband, our children, our friends. How often have you noticed that you'd rather be right than happy? Quite a lot, I imagine. And let me just... Part of this melting of the ice, part of our work, what melts the ice of our... Um, ourselves that surrounds the the jewel is honesty with ourselves. That's what melts it. So there's going to be a lot of self-honesty during this program, the next months and years. Okay. So as the ice begins to melt, we move closer, as it were, to the jewel. No longer is it, does it seem so distant, just a vague something. Yes, life can be better, life can be easier, life can be more joyful. And as we begin to get in touch with that jewel, the jewel of joy, it transforms our life, it changes our life, it changes the way we feel about ourselves. It enables us to connect with ourselves, with our own heart. You could say that that the jewel is the heart. Just another, just another metaphor. So our work, and I'm going to be. This is what I'm going to be guiding you in is to explore how to melt the ice through meditation, through self-observation in daily life. That's what we're going to be engaged with. Okay. Now, as we get in touch with the jewel, or as we work through our um, the ice, which is our rigid held beliefs, what happens is we, we, we begin to connect with that jewel, but connecting with the jewel also enables us to connect with others. Because I believe at our deepest desire is to connect. We want to connect with ourselves and other people, those around us, our loved ones, our friends, maybe work colleagues. We want to connect. We want to feel that connection with other human beings. We're social beings. And our deepest heart, heart wish is to connect, is to be at ease with ourselves, because we can't be at ease with ourselves or we can't connect with other people if we've got this block of ice in the way. Our fears, our anxieties, our vulnerabilities. 
Now, vulnerability is interesting. Vulnerability, when experienced, enables us to connect with other people. But no, we don't like to feel, feel vulnerable. Oh, we pull away from it. Yeah. And it, it stays as part of the ice. And ice is the barrier. So that, I hope, will encourage you to, well, to turn inward. Normally, our attention goes out, out there. We, we look out there for, for um, fulfillment, for satisfaction. And of course, to a, to a certain degree, we need to. We have to engage with the world. But what we're going to do here is, yes, we look outside, but we also look inside. So there's one eye goes out, as it were, and one goes in. So we're going to be involved in inner work. An inner journey. We go on journeys every day, even if it's downstairs <laughs> or a cup of tea. It's a journey. But this is a journey that um, we, we, all, well, we need a guide for. I had a guide, I had teachers for many years, and I still have teachers and, and guides who and guide me along the way. So it's going to take honesty, perseverance, and curiosity. And if we have those three qualities, what we find is that they are actually the, the vehicle for the exploration. Being curious, honest about what's going on. And a kind of perseverance or willingness to keep going. And it's worth it. <laughs> it's worth it. There's nothing more precious than a jewel. And this jewel is within you. So this is the metaphor we will be we will be exploring as we go on. So every audio, every video, every live streaming will be in some way, shape or form looking at how to melt the ice and to connect to contact this jewel. It may not always be explicit, but that's what we're working with. We're working with our thought patterns, the way we think, the way we create an identity out of thinking, the way we resist our emotional life. That is my work. That is what I'm going to help you to do. I'm going to be your guide. So when you're ready, just hop over to a video, um, a live streaming, or um, a meditation. There are meditations down below for you to uh, connect with any time, and you can download them. And there'll be new meditations as we go on. Okay? Thank you very much. Enjoy the journey.